morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Manan, and today I continue my series of uh, my series in robotics. Uh, these are the contents of my presentation. We are discussing chapter number two. Today we'll cover uh, these articles: composition of rotation matrices, order angles, angle and axis, um, followed by unit quaternion uh, and then homogeneous transformations. So let's begin. Uh, if you have um, followed my previous lecture, then you might have an idea how we are proceeding. So we are here right now, composition of rotation matrix. Let uh, O uh, be a region of reference plane X0, Y0, Z0. And O, another origin, uh, it is a uh, reference name of x1, y1, z1 unit vectors. And then here is another origin which has unit vectors x2, y2, z2. It, uh, B3 frames with common origin O. The vector P describing the position of uh, a generic point in space can be expressed in each of the above frames. Let P0, P1, P2 denote the expressions of P in the three frames. So we are representing a P point in three frames and we're calling that P, um, P0, P1, P2, P, uh, as with reference to the frame it is being represented. So at first consider the relationship between the expression P2 of the vector P in frame two and the expression P1 of the same vector in frame one. If R, J, I den denote the rotation matrix of frame I with respect to frame J, so it is P1, we can represent P1, uh, P, uh, rotation matrix 1, 2, P2. So what we are doing, we are going from, uh, from, from reference frame 2 to reference frame 1. So if this rotation matrix is helping us uh, generating the um, unit vectors of uh, frame 2 in terms of uh, reference frame 1. So we are moving from uh, frame 2 to frame 1. Similarly, we can write P0, R01, P1. So we are moving from frame 1 to frame 0. And this matrix is helping us. Um, then we can also move from um, frame 2 to frame 0 directly uh, with the reference, so with the help of this rotation matrix. It is relating from P2 and uh, from frame 2 to frame 0. In other ways, um, substituting uh, equation 2.12 into dot 2.13 and using 2.14, we get uh, this matrix. Our rotation matrix 0, 2 is the combination of uh, rotation matrix. Uh, first, we move from 2 to 1, and then we move from 1 to 0. So this is quite logical. If you move, if you want to move from frame 2 to frame 0. And uh, it is quite equivalent to as uh, it is quite equivalent to as you move from frame two to frame one, and then from frame one to frame zero. The relationship in two point one five can be interpreted as the composition of successive rotations. Now consider a frame um, initially aligned with frame um, O, which is x not y not z not. The rotation expressed by matrix R20 can be regarded as obtained in two steps. First, rotate, and now this is quite opposite to that, okay? So note that. So first, rotate the given frame according to R01 so as to align it with frame O, X1, Y1. So what does it mean that first uh, rotate the given frame, now move from frame 1 to frame 0, okay? Then rotate the frame now aligned with frame O X1 Y1 Z1 according to R12 so as to align it with frame X2 Y2 Z2. So notice that the overall rotation can be expressed as a sequence of partial rotations. Each rotation is defined with respect to preceding one. The frame with respect to which rotation occurs is termed as current frame. Composition of a successive rotation uh, is then obtained by post multiplication of the rotation matrices following the given order of the rotations as in 2.15. So that's what is going on in here. 
and uh, we are going to follow this method for this process as well. So let's see how we do that. With the adopted conditions in, in a view of 2.5, um, it is uh, good to remind that uh, if you move from frame i to frame j, it is equivalent to inverse of, and uh, you are taking the inverse of uh, rotation matrix which moves from frame j to frame i, and it is equivalent to its transpose. Successive rotations can also be specified by constantly referring them to the initial frame. Okay, so we are constantly referring them to initial frame. In this case, the rotations are made with respect to a fixed frame. Sometimes it makes calculations easy. So we actually, in this particular uh, description, we are talking about we are always referring our rotation um, to initial frame instead of uh, considering the uh, frame, uh, considering the rotations after the rotation, uh, considering the rotation, considering the frame after the rotation. So it has some advantages sometimes. So for example, let our uh, rotation matrix present from frame 1 to frame 0 be the rotation matrix of frame O with the region O, x1, y1, z1 unit vectors with respect to fixed frame O, x0, y0, z0. Let then R02, which is again uh, I describe this as bar, denote the matrix characterizing frame O x2, y2, z2 with respect to frame 0, which is obtained as a rotation of frame 1 according to the uh, matrix, this one, uh, from 2 to 1 bar. Since 2.15 gives the composition rule of successive rotations about the axis of the current frame, the overall rotation can be regarded as obtained in the following setting. Now, first, realign frame 1 with frame 0 by means of rotation R01. From, we are moving from R1 to R0. How we want to do that? Just multiply with, uh, with R01 inverse, which is equal to this. Then make the rotation expressed by R12 with respect to the current frame. So after the rotation, rotate it with respect to the current frame. Finally, compensate for the rotation made for the realignment by means of inverse rotations. So which is equal to this one. So let's see what we get. Since the above rotations are described with respect to the current frame, the applications of composition rule 2.15 yields like this. So first we um, take the inverse. Then, after taking the inverse, we uh, what we do? We uh, make the rotation based on the frame we get after the rotation, and then we again realign it with this one. Okay, so if we from here we move from one, um, frame one to frame zero. Okay, as I said, first move by means of rotation r one to r zero. Okay. And then from 0, you take the rotation from frame 2 to frame 1 with respect to current frame, which is available there. And then again from 0 to 1 with respect to the initial frame and then from 1 to 0. So in the end, we get this from 2 to 0. As R01 multiplied with R10 is equal to this thing, which is identity as discussed in 2.16. The, if you'd move R2 to R0, it would, get, uh, it would be quite easy to make it simple like this. So it is important to note that here we are moving from R1 to R0 and then based on the frame we get, we are moving from frame 2 to frame 1. So it simply means that uh, frame 2 to frame 1 we are moving and then it is aligned with this one. So we are actually moving from frame 2 to frame 0 where the resulting R02 is different from the matrix R02 in this perspective. Okay. So uh, it can be stated that the composition of successive rotations with respect to a fixed frame is obtained by pre-multiplication of the single rotation matrices in, in the order of the given sequence of rotations. 
by recalling the meaning of a rotation matrix in terms of the orientation of a current frame with respect to a fixed frame it can be recognized that its columns are direction cosine of the axis of the current frame with respect to the fixed frame while its rows columns while its rows or columns of its transpose and uh, and inverse are the direction cosines of the axis of fixed frame with respect to the current frame an important issue of composition of rotations is that the matrix product is not commutative in view of this it can be concluded that two rotations in general do not commute and its composition depends on the order of the single rotations so you might be confusing at this time don't worry i'd explain that with an example what's the difference between moving from current frame with respect to the current frame or with respect to the initial frame so here is an example this is an object it has x y z three uh, uh, unit vectors describing it first we rotate it with respect to z axis so after rotating with respect to z axis we get this okay then we rotate this uh, object with respect to its current reference frame so its current reference frame is this and we rotate it uh, along the y axis so if we move it along the y axis we get this thing okay and in the similar way we, if you move this uh, matrix um, with respect to y first okay y we get this and this object uh, if we rotate this object with respect to y we get this and then uh, we can the axis we get which is the which becomes the current axis if we rotate it along z axis we get this so it is important to note that by changing the order we get two different shapes also please note that first we moved along z axis and then y axis and y axis is not the initial uh, axis so it is the current axis here i uh, please note that first we move this object with respect to z axis we get this and then we rotate this object with respect to y axis which was initial frame so we get this shape so note that this shape is different than this one although we rotated it in z and y but with a different reference fix uh, initial reference and current uh, uh, reference Uh, initial reference frame and current reference frame so a uh, similar thing is here first we uh, rotate this object with respect to y and then with respect to z uh, with uh, reference frame and from uh, 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 with respect to the initial reference frame so you get this so again z and y if you commute it first z and then y or then if you change the order y and z you get different shapes so Euler angles. I represent. What are the Euler angles? Rotation matrices uh, give a redundant description of frame orientation. In fact, they are characterized by nine elements which are not independent but related by six constraints due to the orthogonal orthogonality conditions given in 2.4. This implies three parameters are sufficient to describe orientation of a rigid body. Okay, a, a representation of orientation in terms of three independent parameters constitutes a minimal representation. So you can represent motion um, uh, from one frame to another frame in a different way, but minimal representation would be like this. In fact, a minimal representation of a special of the special orthonormal group S O M requires M multiplied with M minus one divided by two parameters. Thus, three parameters are needed to para parameterize S O. Three, where only one parameter is needed for a planar rotation. A minimal represent, uh, representation of orientation can be obtained by using the set of three angles, psi, theta, and phi. So, uh, existing set of angles um, out of all twenty-seven. Consider the rotation matrix expressing the elementary rotation about one of the coordinate axes as a function of a single angle. then a generic rotation matrix can be obtained by composing a suitable sequence of three elementary rotations while guaranteeing that two successive rotations are not made about parallel axes so this is important this implies that 12 distinct sets of angles are allowed out of all 27 possible combinations 
Each set represents a triplet of Euler angles. These 12 distinct sets of angles are this one. Zyz, Zyx, Zxy, Zxd, Yxz, Yxy, Yzx, and so on. In the following, two sets of Euler angles are analyzed, namely Zyz angles and the Zyx. We we'll call this roll pitch and your angles. So let's see. So first of all, Z, Y, Z angles. The rotation about uh, the rotation described by Z, Y, Z angle is obtained as composition of the following elementary rotations. So first we rotate about Z, and from X to X, we get from X to X dash, Y to Y dash, and then we rotate about Y. Now it is important we are moving along current axis, current frame. So Y dash. Then we get y double dash in this, and then we again rotate about z, so we get another different form of angle. So let's analyze them. Rotate three reference frame by an angle. I'd say, um, I think it's a phi about x and z. The rotation is described by matrix. We call this. Which is formally defined in equation 2.6. Now rotate the current frame by the angle theta about axis y. This rotation is described by this, which is formally defined in equation 2.7. Rotate the current frame by angle psi, uh, angle, yeah, angle psi about axis z. The rotation is described by R z, which is again formally defined in 2.6. So these are the notations which I have described in a previous slide, just to make it a quick uh, reminder. Uh, the resulting frame orientation is obtained by composition of rotations with respect to current frame, and then it can be computed by post multiplications of the matrices of the elementary rotation. So here it is important to note that because we are moving with respect to the current frame, okay, current frame. This is that is why first R Z, which was the rotation like this in this angle, and then R Y dash and then R Z double dash. And if you multiply all these rotation matrices, matrices, we get this. Um, it is important to note that C represents cos and S here represents sine. So this is cos of uh, phi, cos of theta, C of phi, or maybe sine. The two different symbols. It is useful to solve the inverse problem, that is to determine the set of Euler angles corresponding to a given rotation matrix. So, for example, if we have this uh, matrix and we want to calculate these angles, so how do we do that? Let's go through it. Compare this expression with that of um, R of uh, phi in 2.18. By considering the elements 1 and 3 and 2 and 3, okay, 1, 3, this one, and 2 and 3, sorry, this is 1, wait, this is 1, 3, and this is 2, 3. So if you compare these two elements, sorry, 1, 3 and 2, 3 which is this one and this one, okay, so this one would be cancelled out and we'll get this. So we can calculate um, this angle, okay, where a tan 2 yx is the arc tangent or tangent inverse function of two arguments, okay, so please um, excuse this, these typos, then squaring and summing the elements 1, 3 and 2, 3, and using the elements 3 and 3 yields this. So 1, 3, 2, 3, and 3, 3. So 1, 3, 2, 3, and 3, 3. This one. So if we know um, three, 1, 3, 2, 3, and 3, 3. Okay. So this is cos of theta, we get this uh, sine theta because cos square 5 plus sine square 5 
if we take this it will be equal to 1 so we get this sine of this one squared so we take the under root we we'll get this so by taking a, a tangent inverse we can get this okay the, the choice of the positive sign for, for the term this limits the range of visible values of theta to 0 to pi on this assumption considering the elements 3 1 and 3 2 gives this so you can have these uh, you can calculate these angles if you have this rotation matrix now so the requested solution from z y z angle rotation is this one okay it is also possible impossible to drive another solution which reduces the same effect as solution 2.19 considering theta in the range of minus pi to 0 leads to these results so it would be inverse and the sign would be changed and here again negative and here again negative the signs are changed okay so it's a joke time please read it for yourself i enjoy I hope you would have enjoyed this joke. This is just to make your mind fresh. Let's continue. Now I have discussed about rho, pitch, and yaw angles. In this case, the angles uh, phi, which is equal to the angle uh, psi equals to phi theta and psi, represents. Okay, this is quite strange. I I know I find out uh, what do we call, it. but for the time being, just consider this is a symbol and it represents three angles: phi, theta, and psi. Represent rotations defined with respect to a fixed frame attached to the center of mass of the graph. As uh, so one in theta two point one one in two point nine. So let me zoom that for you. So these are the rotations about different angles, uh, about different axes. Okay theta, phi and psi. The rotations resulting from the roll pitch yaw angles can be obtained as follows. Rotate the reference frame by the angle uh, phi about axis, x axis, we we'll call this yaw movement, yaw movement, yaw movement. This rotation is described by matrix R of x, this subscript x uh, and the angle is phi, which is normally defined in formally defined in equation 2.8 then rotate the reference frame by an angle theta about x is y so we are rotating this frame with respect to the reference frame so we are not changing it so it is important to note that about x is y and we call this movement as pitch this rotation is described by rotation matrix r y theta which is formally defined in 2.7 Again, rotate the reference frame by the angle, um, I'd say phi about x is z, and we call this rho. This rotation is described by matrix Rz, which is formally defined in equation 2.6. Uh, let me show you how rho, which and uh, uh, looks like. So, uh, see this uh, aircraft. This is rho. This is yaw. This is pitch. This motion is pitch. This motion is rolling and this motion is yaw. Again, pitch, rolling, and yaw. So, the resulting frame is uh, like this. It is important to note that um, here we first move in, arc, uh, in x, then y, then z. Okay. So first rotation was x, then y and z, and then x here first, and then y and then z. And it is uh, please note that it goes in opposite direction, x, y, and z. But because we are moving with, res with respect to the reference frame or fixed frame, initial frame. But here we moved with respect to the current frame. So here matrices are multiplied in an opposite way, z, y, and z bar. 
So if you uh, first rotation was made along the z-axis, then y-axis and z-axis because it, these rotations were made along the current frame of axis, so that is why they are multiplied in this direction. If these equations uh, would have been, if, um, if these equations would have been multiplied with, uh, had, if these equations had been multiplied with respect to the initial frame or reference frame, uh, the order would have been opposite. Okay, so for z, then y and x, and oh sorry, x, y, and z first rotation, second rotation, and then third rotation. So if you multiply all these um, um, rotation matrices, you'd get this. So as for the Euler angles, z, y, z, the inverse solution to a given rotation matrix can also be obtained in the same way as we got previously. So I directly go to the solution, which is equal to this one. The solution for theta in the range uh, minus pi by two to pi by two is equal to this one. The other equivalent solution for theta in the range of pi by two to three pi by two is this one. Solution 2.22, 2.23 degenerate when c theta is equal to 0. In this case, it is possible to determine only the sum of difference of phi and psi. Okay, so please see. Phi and psi. So here is the time to take some break. And there is a funny comic. This is robotics mathematics or a highly advanced linear algebra or geometric control kind of thing. Diffeomorphism, unions, and uh, mapping, field mapping, and things like that. Um, so, this is quite funny. <laughs> that skills and then it was. So, angle um, now. A nominal representation. We now we have the in the previous discussions we only discussed uh, things about um, moving the body in uh, with respect to some frame of reference like x x with respect to some norm axis like x axis y axis or z axis. Now in sometimes we have to rotate our body with respect to some frame some other axis which is not actually x y or z. So how can we do that? We discussed this thing in these slides. Let R be uh, an axis which contains uh, Rx, Ry, and Rz. Okay. Let R be the Rx, Ry, Rz be the unit vector of a rotation axis with respect to the reference frame O. Is origin O in order to drive the rotation matrix. In order to drive, in order to drive the rotation matrix R uh, with respect to this reference, uh, with respect to this rotation axis, expressing uh, the rotation of an angle theta about axis R. It is convenient to compose elementary rotations about the coordinate axis of the reference plane. The angle is taken to be positive if the rotation is made counterclockwise about axis R and opposite and vice versa. So sometimes it is really useful and very important. So uh, as shown in this figure, you can see, let me zoom that for you. So this is uh, our uh, and this this is going to be the axis of, uh, um, along which we want to make rotation. So how can we do that? We have formally Rx, uh, sorry Rx, Ry, and Rz, and we want to make rotation along x uh, along this axis, not Rx, Ry, and Z. So let's see how do we do that. Um, a possible solution is to rotate first R by angle necessary to align it with axis Z. So first. Rotate it along uh, so that to align it uh, with axis Z. 
then to rotate by uh, by theta about axis z and finally to rotate by the angles necessary to align the unit vectors with initial direction so what are we doing first we rotate uh, first we align it with this uh, with this axis then first we rotate this uh, axis um, about z axis which is after the after um, uh, aligning it then along y axis and then along x axis so we are going to take the combination of all these sorry going to move in the combination of all these things so first align r with z which is obtained as the sequence of rotation by uh, uh, minus alpha about z and a rotation minus beta about y so first we align it then we rotate uh, by theta about z axis then we realign with initial direction of r which is obtained as uh, as a sequence of rotation by beta about y and rotation by alpha about z so first minus and then posi uh, positive so first uh, align it then rotate it about y then z okay sorry because we are moving in the, in the in the initial frame so first minus alpha then minus beta then z then beta and alpha that's how we're going to get this rotation matrix okay if you have any question please put a comment okay from the components of unit vector r it is possible to extract the trans the transcendental functions needed to compute the rotation matrix in 2.24 so as to eliminate the dependence uh, from alpha and beta in fact it is sin alpha r y uh, it is equal to this and cos alpha cos sin beta cos beta equal to this so uh, it, it then it can be found that the rotation matrix corresponding to a given angle and axis is yes. so is this one so the assignment is to calculate this one this is the problem number 2.4 For this uh, matrix, the following property holds that uh, r minus theta to minus r is equal to r theta and r. So if you take the negative uh, angle and in the negative axis, it would be equal to if you, as you move in a positive direction uh, about the positive axis. Okay. To solve the inverse problem to compute the axis and angle corresponding to a given rotation matrix, again you represent this rotation matrix like this and then you can calculate theta as well. To solve the inverse problem to compute uh, this thing, you can again, I have represented this, and you can also calculate r, which is uh, actually this is a vector, so it is kind of uh, it is like this. This is a unit vector kind of thing, so um, or whatever. But the point is, it's a vector, so you can calculate this uh, r axis as well. And this is for sine theta equals to zero. Okay, sorry for sine theta not equal to zero. Otherwise, this would go to infinity. So it can be observed that three components of R are not independent but are constrained by the condition which is this one. If sin theta equals to 0, the expression 2.27 and 2.28 becomes meaningless. To solve the inverse problem, it is necessary to directly refer to the particular expression attained by rotation matrix R and find the following formula in the two cases when theta equals to 0 and when theta equals to pi. Notice that when theta equals to 0, null rotation, that is the case, the unit vector r is arbitrary, I mean, it's a single, then we get the singularity condition. So this is the pro, uh, assignment here to find this out, and the problem number is 2.5. It is worth remarking that uh, unlike the angle axis representation, a rotation by minus theta about minus r, gives the same quaternion as the associated with the rotation by theta about r. This solves the above known uniqueness problem. So the point I want to make is this one. Yes. 
So if you solve this, um, and if you angle axis representation and rotation by, by minus the, uh, by rotation by theta about r gives the same quantum here. So as that associated with the rotation by theta about r, this solves the above non-uniqueness problem. So it is quite useful. So here I have is some comic. So this is a student asking for some relief. And uh, his professor says, no problem, just a one hour delay, but, but they we're going to meet some, we're going to meet and we're going to discuss. Okay. okay, now unit quaternion, the drawbacks of angle axis representation can be overcome by different four parameters representation, namely the unit quaternion. Um, other parameters defined as Q, Represent uh, in eta and epsilon, where eta equals to cos pi by two, and epsilon is sine theta by two. But eta is called the scalar part of the quaternion, while epsilon it has three components. Okay, wait a minute. So here is a mistake. Um, there is a r being multiplied with it. Okay. So this is not sine, this is simply sine theta by 2, this is r, which is, uh, sorry, which is there as well. So this is called, um, e epsilon is called the vector part of the quaternion. These are uh, constrained by the conditions, this one. So if you um, take the square, add them up all, and you get 1. Hence, it, the, it is named as unit quaternion. In view of um, 2.25, 2.30, 2.31, 2.33, 2.32, the rotation matrix corresponding to a given quaternion takes one of the form. It's like this. So this is another assignment problem. Please verify it. It is desired to solve the inverse problem to compute the quaternion corresponding to a given rotation matrix. And then we get the following results is useful. So and theta is equal to this one and epsilon is equal to this one. Where conventionally uh, this as sine of x is equal to 1 for x greater than 0 and sine is negative for x less than 0. So notice that in 2.34 it has been implicitly assumed that eta is greater than 0. This corresponds to an angle theta which is from minus pi to pi. And thus, any rotation can be described. Also, compared to the inverse solution in 2.27 and 2.28, for the angle and axis representation, no singularity occurs for 2.34 and 2.35. So, this is uh, the beauty of quaternion. When you represent all the angles and uh, in this form, um, there is no singularity, and you will get this from minus pi to pi. The quaternion extracted from R minus 1 equals to R transpose is, den is denoted as uh, quaternion minus uh, quaternion inverse and can be computed as this as this one. Okay. So um, let Q1 quaternion 1 represents eta 1 epsilon 1 and Q2 represents eta 2 epsilon 2 denote the quaternion uh, quaternions corresponding to the rotation matrices R1 and R2 respectively. A quaternion corresponding to the product R1, R2 is given by this. So you would get this product. May the quaternion product, this has been formally introduced. It is easy to see that if Q2 equals to Q uh, quaternion 2 is equal to quaternion inverse, then the equation in the quaternion is 1, 0 is obtained from 2.37. Okay, so you can verify it. You would get 1 from here and 0 from here. Okay. Uh, which is identity element for the product. So, this is an assignment uh, problem number 2.19 to verify it. Then, I discussed a funny comic. When you read news, first of all, it is quite, you'd say that this cannot be true. Our society is not like that. And 
this is a media kind of thing and this is only in media and then you go into denial and then you go into anger and then you get angry because those uh, uh, news is just popping up um, not stopping then you are depressed and then you end up becoming a resistance so it's better not to pay attention and keep looking because this would consume a lot of energy then we have uh, we discuss about homogeneous transformation um as illustrated at the beginning of the chapter the position of a rigid body in space is expressed in terms of position of a suitable point on the body with respect to a reference frame and we call this translation while its orientation is expressed in terms of the components of the unit vectors of the frame attached to the body with the origin in the above point with respect to the same reference frame we call it rotation so uh, consider a po an arbitrary point p in the space let p0 be the vector of coordinates of p with respect to the reference frame o0 now consider the another frame in the space we call this o1 this is body frame let o01 be the vector describing the origin so this one and describing the origin of the frame 1 uh, with respect to the frame 0 and r01 is be the rotation matrix of frame 1 with respect to frame 0 so frame 1 with respect to frame 0 or 01 let also p1 this vector this one this is p1 this is p0 let also p1 be the vector of coordinates of p with respect to frame 1 on the basis of simple geometry geometry the position of point p with respect to the reference frame can be expressed as this one so first we add this translation motion here we move from one to here and then it is aligned with this frame is aligned with origin actually is aligned with this frame and then we uh, transform this point uh, from frame 1 to frame 0 by rotation matrix makes sense right first we move this region from this point to this point with this one and then um, rotate it with respect to the uh, the reference frame so to align it so this is done by rotation matrix the inverse transformation can be obtained by pre multiplying both sides of 2.38 by r01 transpose in view of 2.4 it follows it follows that pre inverse means if you want to go from uh, p0 to p1 so how do we do that p1 you do that inverse with o1 and inverse with this one. okay so this is going to be negative because this is here. so which one 2.16 can be written as this in order to achieve a compact representation of the relationship between the coordinates of the frame of the same point in two different frames the homogeneous representation of a generic vector p can be introduced as the vector p tilde formed by adding fourth unit component which is this one so it is easy to do that and we can represent a translation motion and rotation motion so let's see how do we do that by adopting this representation for the vectors p0 and p1 in 2.38 the coordinate transformation can be written in terms of four one four cross four matrix which is like this so we are moving from frame 1 to frame 0 so there is a rotation and then is a translation this zero and this one represents the fourth component because there is no in during this uh, mm, uh, okay so this is kind of rotations and this is kind of uh, translation this is going to be one which according to 2.41 is termed as homogeneous transformation matrix since uh, this uh, o vector is uh, in th uh, has th three dimensions and has three coordinates and rotation matrix uh, from frame 1 to frame 0 belongs to special orthonormal group 3 this matrix helps to the special uh, special euclidean group we call this one se3 
we can we get this matrix this a particularly multiplying with um, r which is this multiplied with special automatic and this is very important property of this matrix and it would be used a lot in forex as can be easily seen from 2.42 the transformation of a vector from frame 1 to frame 0 is expressed by a single matrix containing the rotation matrix of frame 1 with respect to frame 0 and the translation vector from the origin um, and the trans from the origin of frame 0 to the origin of frame 1 so it can be shown that in 2.42 non null values which are not zero that is the first three elements of the fourth row of a which is four non zero elements for the four, uh, of fourth row of a produces a perspective effect while values other than unity for the fourth element give a scaling effect The scaling effect so this is kind of scaling so you can go back from frame 1 to frame 0 like this the only difference is that rotation matrix in this uh, um, we have added translation motion the coordinate transformation between frame 0 and frame 1 is described by homogeneous transformation matrix a0 to 1 which satisfies the equation so if you want to go in opposite direction uh, yeah, if you want to go to opposite direction from P0 to P1, you're going to get this one. And it's important to note that it is not the same. This one is not equal to transpose. So A10 is equal to this thing. So which gives the homogeneous representation from the result already established by 2.39, 2.40. Now this is assignment problem and call this 2.10. Notice that for homogeneous transformation matrix, the orthogonality property does not hold, which is orthogonality property is this one. Okay. Because it's a special Euclidean group, not special orthonormal. So uh, analogous to what presented for the rotation matrices, it is easy to verify that the Sequence of coordinate transformations can be decomposed by the products like this. So you can always go from frame n to n minus 1 and then blah 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 from 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 1 to 2, and then 1 to 0. And in the end, you'll get from uh, position vector from n frame to 0 frame. Where a and n minus n uh, subscript, prescript n minus 1 denote the homogeneous transformation relating the description of the point in frame n to the description of the same point in frame n minus 1. So this is the end of my presentation. If you have any question, please comment below and contact me. I'd like to share you some famous proboticist. This is Professor Osama Khati from Stanford University. He also has his um, he also has online lectures, so if you want to go through it, it would be good. Then we have Professor Bruno Siciliano, the author of the uh, the author of the book we are studying right now. Then we have Professor Vidya Sakar. He is also a great roboticist, and you would get his book Robot Modeling. Uh, it's a really good book. Uh, with this, I thank you for your attention. Um, I'd appreciate your kind commentary and suggestions. Thank you.